This is Kristen from Christopia Studios. If you've never seen my channel before, Christopia is the utopia I go to in my head that helps me be creative. I'm making sure that my camera is set nicely. Hello, you can see the whole canvas. Today I'm going to do an experiment. Um, I've been seeing a lot of people do deliberate pouring more lately than, than used to be. I used to feel kind of alone in that with only a couple exceptions. And I really want to do one that is kind of a summertime florally thing in nature, but I also want to see if I can get a glassy, shiny effect as well in my deliberate pour. So today I'm just going to do a pour based on kind of a, a pretty jar that's fallen over and um, little flowers have tumbled out. So my first thing that I want to do is make sure, always want to make sure of this, even though I'm not going to be tilting um, this canvas, I am, I do still want to make sure it's level. Looks good that way. Looks good that way. Straighten it out and try again. All right, good. Um, my table is level, but I put some tacks in the bottom of the canvas and I wanted to make sure that they were in at the right angles too, because sometimes that can make your canvas go off level. Um, so I'm only doing one pour today. And part of it is because I want to use some of the colors that I did in a Dutch pour that I recently did. Um, so I'm going to be using some similar colors for that. For the jar, I'll be using some silver. I'm going to be using some white. This color, which is called, it's a color shift, but it's called Dragon Flash, which, you know, the color, the name itself makes me happy because I like dragons. And then kind of a seafoam blue for in between kind of the white and the blue. Those colors are going to be in the jar itself. And um, but I want first to lay down a base and what I'd like to do is kind of try for a wood grain and to do that I'm going to be using this little, this is raw umber and this will be the only color that I have silicone in and there's a little tiny bit of silicone already in here so I'm not going to add any more. Um, I'm just going to make sure that my colors are the right thinness. And what I'm going to do for the wood grain is I'm putting down this kind of antique white color because I want it to be like a, almost a super light, almost white butcher block look. And then I'm going to string pull this raw umber through it in strips to where, um, to see if I can get a little bit of a, a wood grain look. If the string pull doesn't work, I'll just use my handy dandy chopstick. It's got a nice pointy edge and I'll, I'll pull the lines through with that. I kind of want it to be kind of a, um, durr. I kind of want it to be where the wood grain is is kind of coming out just a tiny bit as if as if to surround this kind of a perspective thing. So that's the first thing I'm gonna do. So let's get started. Now I've never done anything like this before. It could be a miserable failure, it could be average, or it could be a resounding success. I don't know. So you get to watch me see what happens. I have, I have a few strings here. I have a thin one and a couple of thicker ones. And I have old raggedy clothes over here that I use to wipe everything off. As most of you who know me know, I recycle everything. I clean off my sticks. I clean out my yogurt containers and reuse them over and over and over again until they're just, until they just can't be used anymore. So far I haven't found some that can't be used anymore. So anyway, I'm going to use this antique white as my base and it seems a little 
on the thick side, but I kind of want my base to be slightly thicker, but I don't want it to be, I also don't want it to swallow up my paints. This is just an apple barrel old ac acrylic paint. Uh, a lot of people say apple barrel white will crack on their canvas, but since I'm looking for a wood grain on this anyway, if there's a crack or two, I don't really care and I need to use up this old paint. So that's what we're doing first. Just gonna cover the canvas. I'm just gonna save a tiny bit in the thing in case I have to repair a spot later. Use my cake spreader, my icing spreader. Spread the paint. Spreading the paint. You guys like when you're talking to yourself, tend to sing things to yourself. I don't know if you do, but I do all the time. It's crazy. It's weird. Sometimes it's a song I have in my head that's a pop song. I can't do that on camera because we don't want to copyright violate any songs that pop in my head. So I just have to make it up. I suppose I could sing happy birthday to you now, but it's not my birthday and I don't know anybody whose birthday is today. Um, since it's now gone beyond its copyright, I want to make sure there are no, since this is an older paint, I want to make sure there are no lumpies in here. Man, it's warm. I should put my hair up in a ponytail. And I'm going to use the excess to just cover my sides just to make sure I don't have any bare canvas peeking through after this dries. I don't tape the bottom of my canvas or anything like that. I know a lot of people like to have a clean back on their canvas, but frankly, I kind of like, I kind of like the back of my canvas to show that I really worked on something. So I'm going to just make sure everything is covered, especially up here, because I'm going to start pulling my string down that direction. I'm going to wipe this stuff off. These old rags are just old t-shirts, leggings, etc. that were just too ratty to donate. So I'd rather use this than paper towels. Now, occasionally I do use paper towels for swipes because it's just really the best that I've found for bigger swipes when you're swiping down through a canvas to make a pattern. I feel like paper towel still has been the best I've used. I've tried plastic sheeting, I've tried light cardboard, and it just doesn't seem to work as well. So I'm gonna torch a couple bubbles out. I think I'm running out of butane, I need to Fill it up soon. All right. So now what I'm going to do is first I'm going to try this thicker, thicker piece of yarn. And I'm just going to dip a bit in the, ooh, I'm going to need to cut this in pieces because I'm going to drag it the wrong place and I don't want to do that. So let me snip a couple of little lengths. Well, no, maybe I'll do it a different way. I know. I'm going to pull it through a different way. Um, so I think I need a little more fluidity in my raw sienna. Can you see my raw sienna down there? Yes. I just want to make sure what I'm doing is in the picture because I know it's really boring to sit there and hear somebody talk about their colors but not be able to see what they're actually doing. So I'm going to pull this down in here and I'm going to do one on the edge first because I just want to make sure not to overwhelm my canvas. So I'm going to move you guys out of the way. And then to arch that 
this way. And just pull it down. And see that's eventually going to be the outline for the board and that worked out better than I expected. So I'm just going to dry off the excess paint on my rag and dip it in and do it again on that same board this time. I think I don't I didn't have enough. Because I was experimenting. But now that I know do it and make that crown a little bit longer. Make some spots and begin down here. And see that's kind of a bit of a board right there and I can make it more of a board later I'll probably do most of this afterwards by just maybe using a thin string to pull through a line on either side this could become a knot in the wood too much so I need to stop for a while I'm ahead. All right so my experiment looks okay so I'm going to go ahead probably speed this up while I pull the rest of these strings because I'm going to be doing it on this whole canvas. This is a 14 inch by 14 inch canvas by the way. And there you have it. It turned out really good. It actually looks like a butcher block table, which is kind of what I was hoping for. Um, in order not to make this too terribly long though, I'll put this, I'll make this part one. This is part one tutorial, how to make a wood grain in a painting using string. Um, and then the next video, we will work on putting that pretty glass vase or mason jar, I think is what I'm gonna do and throw some flowers up there. So we'll see you next time. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel for more art content. Hit that little bell if you wanna be notified when my next videos go up. There's also a link below to my PayPal tip jar if you feel so inclined, as well as a link to my Facebook art page I hope you're staying safe and that you have a great day.